Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi, I'm Josh. Josh Foreman here. Your local, not local, crafty creative. Today, we have a moment of truth. I've been working on this guy for literally two months. You know, my off time. And uh, we're, we're so close to the end. However, it's also a, oh God, is this actually the end? Because um, I, I hope this is the final thing that's going to work, but I'm just honestly not sure yet. So we're gonna find out today, did it work? Did this technique of um, Basically, taping off, well, mask, so we started with one paint color. Where's the, uh, where's my reference art? Hold on. It's got a bunch of overspray on it, but you get the idea. This is the guy we're going for. So I started with the skin color, then I masked that off, and then I did the hair, then I masked that off, did the beard, masked it off, etc., etc. And so he's been slowly accruing more and more masking as we go. And I expect that there will be some cleanup to do around the seams, which I'll have to do with a hand brush. But the hope is that um, it's small enough seam. And because the paint is the same paint I used to uh, airbrush, that they will blend together relatively uh, effortlessly, smoothly. Nothing is effortlessly, is it? Hi, Fizz. This is your first time to a Reaper stream. Congrats. Welcome. Now you know what I'm like when I'm not at home. Just a completely different person. You see, I'm on my best behavior here because, you know, I, I'm in someone else's home. So I don't have my feet on the table. I'm not slurping my soup. Fortunately, we have a lovely mod here to take your very important role on the home channel. Quindy does a fantastic job I've never once had to suffer a threat against my life or been offered a way to become famous and buy followers. Alright, so I think that chocolatey goodness there, that is the beard that we are looking for. And it actually looks like it stayed perfectly smooth. It looks like the color consistency is uh, very consistent. That's the first thing I look for in consistency, is that a thing is consistent. Ah, oh, you use all those offers for yourself. No wonder you're so famous, Quindy.
I must have sprayed this paint a little thicker there because it's got a little flappy doodle left over. But in theory, I should be able to pull off the skin and the hair um, mask at the same time, but since they're on different layers with paint sprayed between them, that's not what's happening. Actually, I don't even think that is an oops. I think I purposefully had this little bit of overlap here because I expected to come in with the brush and do this line really precisely with a hand brush. Because try as I might, I could not get the any of the um, three different, four different masking methods that I tried, I could not manage to get a perfectly clean straight line. Face off time, mask off. And this uh, brown paint is very um, elastic. It doesn't doesn't want to cut or chip. It just wants to stretch and flop. In some places, like this little division here between the beard and the hair, that actually seems just fine. If I can pull this off without also disturbing the surface underneath, this line would work as well, I think. So yeah, it looks like the, um, the, the last time I tried doing this, I was using spray paint for all of the colors. And every time I pulled the mask off, it was just a just a shower of tiny little chips and that's not so much the case here which I'm really relieved about you could be very, that's true you might be um, you might be Lou Gehrig's or the famous Lou Gehrig's disease for all I know Very close, just just the details. I gotta color the cheeks, I gotta do the the lines between it, his eyes obviously. He's gonna look a lot better with eyes. I hope. I just have, um, clearly have psychotic powers because I can, I can
can divine these sorts of things. Alright, I do not want to press hard on the face because the, um, the spray paint that I absolutely love for the skin color um, is a lacquer and it is very uh, impressionable. is like wrapping a very elaborate or unwrapping a very elaborate Christmas present. And the gift is um, the chance that I won't have to redo the paint for the 800th time. That's all I want for Christmas is to not have to redo this paint for the 800th time. Yeah, and the golden paint turned out really well too. Really? They're not impressed by my psychotic skills? What? I mean, just give me their home addresses and I'll, I'll pay them a visit and convince them of my psychotic skills. I think that seems reasonable. Now the gray and the red on the spray can. Oh no, actually the, the gray is mostly golden, that's right. Mostly golden with a little bit of Createx. When I realized I had a big, uh, much larger bottles of black and um, white Createx, which is cheaper than the golden. Um, and I also mixed in a little bit of silver, uh, that uh, FW ink, because I thought it'd be fun to just get, get just a hint of a little bit of show. Uh, silver glimmer in there even though the the style is more like flat cartoony metal not like realistic shiny metal um, wanted just a touch of it and I think those paints did not like mixing together because I kept getting little black pepper flecks shooting out of my airbrush which I was not getting with any of the other colors Did you ever do this thing where you would wrap a present for someone? Like, you get a, a little teeny tiny thing and you put it in a little teeny tiny box and then you put that in a small box and then you put that in a, in a little box and then you put that in a medium box and then you put that in, you know, just on and up and up and up. I used to love doing that. Nowadays, I ain't got time for that she. But as a kid, I would do that all the time. And any time I'd go to a friend's birthday party and, you know, my parents would ask me to pick a present for them, I'd pick something as small as possible specifically so I could do that ridiculous thing. And whenever we got, like, 
a appliance, you know, microwave or refrigerator. I don't know if I ever actually got a refrigerator box, but I always dreamed of being able to uh, scale it up to that size. Roll up to their birthday party with a refrigerator box for their present. And then it just ends up being, you know, like a, a little pack of cards or something after you get through eight boxes. I'm uh, clearly trying to convince people of my psychotic bona fides. Bona fides. Bona fides. Bona fides. Bona fides. A brick for your friend's brother. Wow. At least my presents were an actual present by the time you got to the bottom. I thought I was psychotic. Apparently someone else gets that prize. I don't know, maybe he deserved it. Was, was he the kind, kind of person who deserved to get a brick? Mm, yeah, gift bags are the best. Aren't they the best? Just kind of cheaty, cheap shortcut. <laughs> Throw it in a bag and stuff some tissue on it. But you get it pre-bagged. That's, that's even more special. So I do have a little bit of a problem here um, with this surface of the can and the brown of the beard. I'm not sure if that's because of the mask. I think it's the mask that I put over the beard. It extended too far onto the can. So we'll have to see if I can clean that up with a brush. I have a feeling that what it's gonna do is make a kind of a lumpy stripe that I'm gonna have to go back and touch up again. And so here's another thing where like, the red is going too far over the gray, but I'll just hand paint over the gray. And since there's a natural lip on that surface anyway, it, totally fine, that's great. Wherever there's natural lips that divide the color, that makes things so much better. Okay, trying to figure out the best approach for removing this part. Maybe I'll start here. I don't know when that gift bag thing started. I don't remember it when I was a kid or even a young adult. But man, when I first discovered that as an alternative to the elaborate wrapping practices, especially on awkward things, like on a simple square rectangular box, it's okay, but it's annoying. You have to find tape. You have to have the wrapping paper somewhere. It needs to be the appropriate wrapping paper. You need to find scissors. It's terrible. You would think I would have all this stuff easily on hand, being a crafty, creative type, but um, it seems like whenever you need it for that kind of activity, they are never at hand. But anyway, uh, I think the Nobel Peace Prize should go to whoever came up with the gift bag idea. I actually spent several weeks out of each year working at a gift wrapping booth for some charity. I can't remember. Maybe it was for my church or something as a teenager. So I wrapped like hundreds of presents a year. But again, when you're all set up and you're at a booth and you have all the supplies right there with you, you know what I mean? It's a totally different paradigm. It's the things that you have to do occasionally and then you need to have materials or supplies that you hardly ever need, but when you do need them, you can't find, that's, that's the pain point.
Yeah, and I'm really happy with how well this paint is staying on too. Like it's not, I was definitely concerned that as I pulled this off, it would be pulling off little chunks of it, especially on the places where I airbrush this like smooth transition from orange to yellow. It's actually turning out pretty golden. But dun dun Product placement. Golden, please sponsor my streams and make me famous. not looking so hot. I wonder why. I wonder if I was just like pressing down on the surface too hard at one point. That should sure get all messed up, didn't it? Maybe it hadn't fully set before I put the um, mask on it. This, um, this particular spray paint has caused me probably half of the problems I've encountered in this project. And what's stupid about it is the reason that I'm so stubbornly sticking with it instead of just mixing my own color is that I just love, I love the particular color and I love how shiny it is. And it's like, because, you know, this other paint isn't as shiny, but this, ooh, shiny. And it's like, well, you're just gonna put a clear coat over it. You can make it as shiny as you want, Josh. Josh! Um, but, does Josh's animal shiny brain care? No, it's like, no, we gotta stick with the spray paint no matter what, it's so perfect. And also like on the um, the body parts, it worked perfectly great. I mean, look at that. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I just want that feel all over, right? It's not, is that so much to ask? Matt Paint then abusing your clear coats. Yep, exactly. You know, it's funny, I was literally talking to my dentist about that yesterday. She kept using the little air blower thing and then was like, okay, try not to close your mouth and while she got the other tool for cleaning. And I asked her, I was like, why, why does that tool work better on dry teeth rather than um, wet teeth? And it wasn't that the tool worked better, it's just that she could see the detail better of where the buildup was that needed to be cleaned away if it's dry, because the highlights aren't obscuring it. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, that's exactly the problem I was running into in my sculpture was, like, on this little lip here, when I was applying the mask, because it's, like, kind of a U-shaped lip, it was catching the highlight in the shiny paint and it was really hard to see where the edge of the mask was as a result. And I was like, it's way better to paint matte to begin with and then, then make it as shiny as you want. So 
I'm wondering if I'm gonna reapply on this face. We'll, we'll have to see if I have to do it on the big one as well. Um, because, well, that's another reason that's keeping me using this spray paint is because if I change halfway through to a different color, you know, there's no way I'm gonna perfectly match with, uh, you know, with these paints here. I can get awfully close, but it's never gonna perfectly match. And so I keep thinking, well, I'll just, it's so close, I'll just stick with the what I'm doing right now and suffer through the constant repainting that I have to do on the skin just to keep everything perfectly consistent. I don't know why this section of the beard is giving me such a problem. But it'd be nice if it didn't because this uh, fade from the orange to the yellow is going to be hard to reproduce perfectly by hand. So I would like to be able to just do the brown beard to clean up the seam as opposed to having to do the hair. afraid I'd like press that in and stuck it down real hard or something. Yeah, whenever I need art advice, I always go to my dentist. It's funny because, um, well, that was just the hygienist who was doing the cleaning, but that the dentist who works at that office, they were open-minded enough to let me design my own um, appliance, essentially. Because I made a mold of my own teeth. I have a, like a gap between my front teeth that was growing larger. You know, I had, I had um, braces as a kid and everything was fixed and then, you know, you get older and things stop being fixed. And I had to chip my tooth as a kid and the, um, the little filling appliance thing that was in there to, to fill that chip uh, had broken off. And so we needed to put a thing there anyway. And I was like, you know what? If, the, if that little chip filler actually ex uh, extended a little further to fill the gap between my front teeth, it, two, two birds and one stone. You're fixing a thing and doing an aesthetic thing. And they were like, yeah, we don't really do stuff, stuff like that. Um, doesn't make sense to like extend the, the width of a tooth. And I was like, trust me, it does. And I will prove it. And so I, yeah, I took a mold of my teeth. I made, I sculpted the little thing exactly as it would need to be. I showed them how it would like pop on and off. And they were like, Oh, yeah, actually that's pretty easy and it looks fine, you're right. So, uh, impressive to have a dentist who's willing to hear from someone outside their industry. It probably helps that uh, I also created space maintainers and retainers for a local dentist when I lived in Alaska. So I had some experience with uh, appliances.
guys out. There's definitely going to be some cleanup work here. Like, I don't know why this little chunk here does not want to flake off. Oh, there we go. Okay. There must have been a little ridge or ripple on the surface that was trapping it. But if I'm going to redo this surface, which I'm almost sure I am because I've already put in so much time, I'm not going to have it be imperfect after all that time. Um, that means I'm going to mask off all the hair on the face. Yeah, so there's no reason to do like the cleanup paint work on this one until I've done that, that part of it. It's annoying, but it's not, it's better than uh, it could have been. Like it could have turned out much worse. So should be grateful. how the big boy turned out. This is the one I'm most worried about. You ever see that um, classic Twilight Zone episode where someone's getting plastic surgery to fix them so they won't be hideously ugly? And you don't see them before the surgery, but then they remove the gauze and it's this really long scene of removing the gauze, just building that tension. And then, spoiler alert, uh, the surgery didn't work, and I, I think, if I'm remembering this correctly, everyone's horrified by the hideous face underneath, and the camera reveals that the face under the bandages is just like a normal, I think it was like a pretty woman, right? I think it was a woman. And then the camera switches around and shows what the doctors were, and they have all got these like distorted pig faces. Spoiler alert for a 70-year-old TV show. What makes me wonder? At some point, does it become, like, legitimate spoiler? Like, is there an age of media that reaches where it's reasonable to expect that hardly anyone has seen it, therefore it is, like, legitimately a spoiler again? It loops all the way around from being silly that it's a spoiler because it's so old to being, like... Hmm.
72 years is the cutoff. That makes sense. I think I actually, um, I think this rubber wasn't totally dry when I attached the tape to it. And I'm seeing much stronger adhesion in those areas. That's interesting. Don't think it's going to have any negative consequences, but it's interesting to think about how maybe that could be used to my advantage someday. Yeah, the easy access part is the trick though, isn't it? Because everything is so dispersed now, it's not like... Because I have, I don't know, probably most of the notable big streaming services. I've got the, the Apple and the HBO and Hulu and Netflix. What are other big ones? Oh, Amazon Prime. I think those are the ones we have. I don't have the CBS one, which sucks because I like watching Star Trek even though I hate all the new Star Trek shows. Hate is a strong word. I like looking at all the new Star Trek shows. I hate how they don't feel anything like, they just feel like Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica or whatever instead of what made Star Trek different but whatever. I think there was one other thing that CBS had that I was like, oh, I would, that's a value add for me. I can't remember what it was now. Who's got CBS All Access and can tell me what amazing programming they have that's not Star Trek? You know what I've been loving the crap out of though? Um, is it Amazon? I think Amazon has a Wheel of Time TV series. I read the first several books as a teenager, like as they were coming out. I'm that old. Um, I think by the time the fourth one came out and I started reading it, I realized that like I didn't remember 90% of what was in the other ones, and so I would have to reread them, and they're so massive, I was like, ugh, I give up. But, um, holy cow, I, I think they're following the books pretty well, and uh, I rarely like to use the word ripoff in creative endeavors. Let's just say that story is a Lord of the Rings remix. There we go. It's a remix of Lord of the Rings. So hard. But I still love it. I mean, Lord of the Rings is like my favorite movie, so 
hey, if you want to make more Lord of the Rings movies with different characters, uh, great. That's pretty much what the show is, so. Except in this one, the ring wraiths have mouths, but they still don't have eyes. And the orcs are called Trollexes. Trollex? Trollexi? Trollexi? Trollexi. Trollexia. Let's go with that. And the hobbits are as tall as normal people. The Shire is pretty much the same. Folky, happy, people living out in the boonies, unaware of the wider world around them, uncaring about it until it comes to their doorstep. Gandalf is a girl. There you go, there's something. Strider has a katana instead of a regular sword. I guess I guess that's unfair to say. Instead of a western sword. So there's there's a few differences here and there. Oh, one of the hobbits is a girl too. That's nice. Yeah, there's a YouTuber that I like. Um, Wheel of Time is his favorite book. He's uh, Daniel, wait, is it Daniel Green? No, that's, that's the Log Brothers guy. Who, who is the guy that I like? Um, is it Dan, man, I've watched like 20 of his videos in the past month. I'm so bad at names. Anyway, he mostly reviews fantasy literature and TV shows and movies. Um, but it's been fun watching his uh, deconstruction of the show, deconstruction, analysis, uh, critique of the show. One thing he hasn't touched on is like how much of the Lord of the Rings e influence is from the books versus how much was like done for the show. Um, and since he hasn't really called it out, I, I assume most of that Lord of the Rings e stuff is is in the story itself. off or do I need to kind of blade it a little bit I think I need to blade it a little bit but using a light touch I think that experience of reading the books as they as they came out and having to reread um, that's probably a thing that only people of a certain age have suffered right because People who are not in their mid 40s uh, would have encountered those books after most or all of them had already come out. So I would say that's a problem unique to us old fogies. But as a level designer and terrain maker, I have to say the set design of that show is Lord of the Rings level, maybe even better, which is shocking. Like, it's a freaking TV show, people. You don't need to go this extra. But man, they went that extra and it is so inspiring. It is worth watching just for the inspiration of the set design, the background, the environment design in general. I've heard a lot of mixed things about the costuming. Uh, 
people don't like how like clean and pristine a lot of the outfits are. You know, it gives it sort of a cosplay feel or LARPing feel to a lot of people, but um, I don't know, it, that never rose to my conscious awareness. Some less than stellar CG on the Trollocs. But again, it's a TV show, so it can be forgiven. Like, they've got to do a lot more footage than a movie needs to. Although the budgets are not drastically dissimilar as far as, like, dollars per minute of viewing. But there's so much of it, I could, I could see how that could cause difficulties. Okay, so see here how the the beard like stops before like, sort of the halfway point on the hair there? That's good because now I could go in with my brush and define where that line is over the hair. I'm not worried about having to paint that perfect uh, gradated tone with by hand of the, the hair going over the beard because the beard goes over the hair. paint there. Lord of the Rings ripoff is not a strong endorsement. Ah. I don't know. Did you like Lord of the Rings? Here's the thing. You know, back in my day, the game Doom came out. And then a bunch of other companies started making Doom clones, they were called before that genre got the label first-person shooter. There were dozens of Doom clones that came out in the half decade or so after Doom that kept being called Doom clones. And at what point does it just become its own sort of sub-genre, you know? And if you liked Doom, chances were you would also like the Doom clones. So I would say if you like Lord of the Rings, chances are a lot of the similar elements being sort of remixed in a slightly different package, uh, you'd probably enjoy it as long as you're not like, um, aesthetically offended at the similarities. happens with bands too like uh, really influential bands who have a pretty unique sound for their time and then other bands come in and start kind of riffing along those same lines at first those those me too bands are sort of seen as pathetic bad artists because they're just doing something that someone else did you know, better, quote unquote. Um, but eventually, once it becomes its own genre, that's no longer a valid critique. surface of the face is not perfectly pristine like there's definitely some ripples and wrinkles in there that I'm not happy with and I think since I'm going to be redoing the the color spray on the medium head I might as well do it on the large one as well <laughs> Store brand Lord of the Rings. Okay. 
that is that is fair. I mean, arguably, you could say that all the Lord of the Rings references are front-loaded, and then after that it goes off in its own unique direction. But I wouldn't know because I can't remember enough of <laughs> the book that I read. I think the characters and the acting are really well done. Like, characters are interesting enough. The acting, I think, across the board is good. Actors lend enough gravitas to sell it, right? That's often difficult to do in fantasy. One of the rings, uh, one of the reasons that the Lord of the Rings films work is because they managed to find a cast that could sell it. And one of the reasons that I can't handle LARPing because these are not professional actors and they're not selling it. To be fair, I have not participated closely in a LARP, so I should not criticize what I have not actually participated in. My brother does a lot of LARPing. I've seen a lot of video of LARPing, and it just reminds me too much of like, high school drama team stuff. Is it a team? Is it a drama team? What it, a drama club? Who are the kids in drama class? What is that group called? Drama council? Drama Conspiracy. Mm. Drama Masters. Drama Mamas. Come on, I know at least someone watching was in drama class. What were you guys called? That's fair, Fizz. Uh, when I dress up, as Link and run around on hiking trails in the uh, greater Seattle area. That is pretty close to LARPing, but it's not actually LARPing because we're not trying to um, like tell a collaborative story in real time while applying, applying game rules. to think how I want to uh, the strategy I want to use for the mask because I can't hand paint the skin color that's the tricky part even if I decant it when you uh, decant spray paint and try to hand brush it it ends up in a very lumpy blob so I need to make sure that my skin color overlaps the hair color enough that I can come back in with a brush and just do the hair color. Unfortunate because it does mean I'm going to have to recreate this fade to some degree.
Another thing I'm curious about is, um, do I need to coat the entire surface with rubber like I did for the body? Because there were several places on the body, which again, this is spray painted, where um, you can see a little bit of a line where I did a, not with the highlight like that. It's hard to make out and once it has the, you know, glossy coat over it or whatever you won't be able to tell at all I think um, but I don't want to introduce yet another layer of noise that I have to deal with so I'll probably just go ahead and play it safe and cover everything with rubber it's uh, cheap enough in this this um, peel tech stuff cheap enough that it's fine to do. Uh, if I had to cover it with the art stuff, that would be, I'd have to think a lot harder about that. I'm forgetting that with this beard it's got not just the brown beard layer but also the hair layer and the um, spray painted darker hair layer so it's got three or four coats of paint that I'm having to chip away that's why it's a, presenting a more ragged edge as I clean it than the other layers Uh, I haven't seen episode one of Hawkeye, so no. Is that out now? Right, I guess it must be, if you're asking.
think I will do the rubber mask before the sanding, just because that will kind of protect both from the sanding and also from like disturbing the surface under there. Not a bad show. Good to hear. Um, I think I've seen all of the Marvel TV shows is that have come out. Mm, actually, let's practice on the medium one. Just because if I realize, oh wait, I'm doing something completely wrong, I can, I can backpedal. So I don't need to worry about this bottom part of the skin part, it's just the face. Uh oh. Am I still up and recording? Someone confirmed that I'm up and recording. I keep getting this weird message about playback or something. Oh, that's a different thing. Yeah, my camera's recording, but my computer maybe thinks that I'm trying to record with my Streamlabs OBS. And it better not be. That'd be a big waste. Big waste of space. That's what they used to call me in high school. One thing that's kind of annoying is that this um, peel tech just happens to be almost identical to the skin color that I'm using. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to be very careful as I'm applying it around there. Uh, let's see, how are we gonna do this? this. Again, I'm thinking I need to err on the side of getting the mask uh, not covering, sorry, there should always be a little bit of a yellow line there so that the skin is covering where I need to do the final hand painted line. But probably the less overlap the better. I can't get a factory smooth line with this rubber at least as close to it as I can with a hand painted uh, brush stroke I have to rely on that last pass afterwards
low disk space. Wow, okay, so this actually must be recording. Uh, sorry, let me check real quick, like, what, why? Why would this be recording? Uh, output, streaming, recording. Uh, generate recording path. Uh, I don't see a button that's like auto record. That would be weird. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Oh, look at that. There's a checkbox, automatically recorded streaming. Okay, so I literally have probably a million hours, literally a million hours of streams sitting on my computer. No wonder it runs like garbage. Wow. Really convenient that there's that button doesn't exist in the recording section of the uh, interface where I would have checked previously. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just um, take all those recordings and put them into 10 hour chunks and upload them to my YouTube channel. 10 hour of Josh streams, boom. What a value, people would go nuts to get that free content. hours is still the max you could upload to YouTube, right? Because otherwise, if I could upload them all in like a thousand hour video on YouTube, how epic and awesome would that be? Yeah, uh, there is a record button down at the bottom of the uh, of the stream and maybe I just haven't really looked at it. Maybe it was glowing red and I didn't realize it. Um, I don't know. Fizz, if I haven't remembered, maybe you can help me remember. Um, since I have to run to a meeting right after this, I, I won't have time to do this. If I haven't remembered to go and delete those billion trillion hours of uh, stream video, remind me next time I stream. Please, please do this for me. I would write a note, but my hands are a little sticky right now.
this is probably the stage where a brush should come into the equation. Ooh, but, well, how much time do I have? 15 minutes, is that enough time to get the other coat on? Probably not. I think I only have one um, uh, disposable brush left and so I don't want to use it unless I'm going to be able to do all the brushing that I need on both of the heads and I don't think I have time for that. I mean, nobody got time for that. What do you think the flavor of this rubber would be? Like my first guess would be mint, but now I'm second guessing that. It's definitely the color of like spearmint gum. But I feel like whoever made this peel tech would be a little more creative than that. Mmm, toothpaste, yeah. Although I guess toothpaste is kind of mint too, at least default. Toothpaste is. It reminds me of this weird, like, success story that my mom told me about when I was a kid, and she was really excited about this and was like, You should be able to do something like this, Josh. And it was about a, a child entrepreneur who started making their own toothpaste in their bedroom putting it in like used baby food jars and they made lots of different like interesting flavors. Now this was back in the 80s when that was probably a very novel concept. Maybe even late 70s, I don't know. Um, but they, you know, they started selling it to, to friends and neighbors. But, and then somehow word spread. This is before the internet. I don't know how word spreads before the internet, but somehow word spreads and, you know, he ends up selling so much that he, he can, like, buy the necessary equipment to start mass producing it. And he became this, this rich entrepreneur by starting out selling homemade toothpaste in used baby food jars and, it, and I think to myself as an adult now I would not buy toothpaste in a used baby food jar from a child no thank you sorry would be entrepreneur child Dr. Scrub flavor. <laughs> oh yeah, like a disappointing cotton candy, like diet cotton candy or something. Oh, has anyone made that? Someone needs to make diet cotton candy. <laughs> it's, just, it's like when you're expecting ice cream and you get frozen yogurt. Mm, I 
Cotton balls. Mmm. <laughs> I mean, I guess it gives your mouth something to do. Could at least be like cotton balls with uh, stevia sprinkled on top or something. Our beautiful cotton candy toothpaste. What was the other thing? Uh, delicious head. We'll let that dry. I think what I'll do in the meantime. I did actually title this stream painting, and so far I've done zero painting, which is pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. <sighs> Quindy, don't knock it till you try it. Literally one glove left. So I'm going to do a little painting, because I can. Uh, got like nine minutes left. I can do this. I'm going to try to paint all of his um, shoelace hole things. You know, the classic shoelace hole thing. <laughs> yes, in quotes, please. You also have to put uh, vinyl in quotes too, because it's actually a 3D print. It's only the style of vinyl, three, uh, vinyl painting. Actually, if you could just put every single word in quotes, that would be ideal. a 40% gray, somewhere around there. Itty bitty brush. Okay. Naturally, we want to start with the very hardest challenge first. Uh, it should be Josh in quotes and then Foreman in quotes. Calm down that camera.
Not beautiful, but it gets the job. That's the one I'm giving away on my YouTube channel anyway, so it can be garbage. Ooh. Try not to miss this time. The Crafty Creative with Josh Foreman. Exclamation point. Custom wow art. Yep, exactly. Perfect. I mean, it does fit my epistemological proclivities perfectly, so I approve of quotation marks around every word that is ever uttered.
Hey, here we are, we made it. Time to raid. I will paint little eyelets on these boots to paint us out while a raid is found. In the meantime, I'm gonna talk about myself. My name's Josh Foreman. I've got a YouTube channel that is fantastic and full of helpful tips and tricks with art and design oriented stuff. I uh, have books out called The Scarred King. There's The Scarred King 1 and The Scarred King 2. If you look up that name with the name Josh Foreman on Amazon, you will find it both available on ebook and physical paperback. Um, I've got Instagram. You can follow me in all the places. My Instagram is Breath of Life Dev because I couldn't get Josh Foreman for some reason. Uh, I also have a Twitch channel where I stream more of this stuff. Welcome to check me out there. There I am, Josh Foreman. Easy to find. And I thank y'all and have a good one. Bye, y'all.